Bettina Deusser, a head of clean water unit at the European Commission. Bettina, are you online with us? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Very clearly. Thank you, Bettina. Okay, you've got five minutes. All yours. <laughs> I'll try to be very fast. I don't uh, see my presentation there yet, but maybe I also don't need it because actually many of the things that I was going to mention have already been mentioned by the previous speakers. So my aim uh, today was to bring a bit of a horizontal perspective into the discussion Obviously, uh, water uh, is a very cross-cutting issue and has uh, many uses. There are many demands on water, pressures on water and resulting impacts, and industry is uh, one of them. So, uh, in a way, you are in good company, uh, and uh, in the Commission, of course, we have to look at the whole picture. We have a fantastic instrument to do this, because in principle, the Water Framework Directive is designed to take a holistic approach to water. Here is my presentation now, so great. You can um, switch the slides by yourself if you go down with, your, with the arrow in, um, underneath your slides. And there will be yes, error. Now, now it's there, yes. Okay. Okay, so this uh, was the obvious that uh, is in any event clear to everybody. Um, water legislation is comprehensive and uh, quite mature at this stage. Uh, many of you have already mentioned some of the instruments explicitly, like the Water Framework Directive was, of course, uh, mentioned by the Swedish colleague, uh, but also implicitly, I think, by all of you, because you have referred to urban wastewater, you have referred to water reuse, and you have also referred to uh, water quality uh, impacts from the chemicals industry. So. Um, in, in this slide, you can see a little bit where we are. Um, these uh, water uh, laws have just been evaluated, and I will get into a little bit of details on the results in as far as they're relevant uh, to your perspective also. We have two uh, new instruments which are in the process of being finalized in the interinstitutional process. One is our new regulation on water reuse. This is really new. It doesn't revise anything that existed before, but is a new instrument to address uh, challenges uh, from climate change and water scarcity. And this regulation will be applicable where um, urban wastewater is used to irrigate agricultural products. It's about quality parameters that need to be fulfilled uh, by this water in order to be safe for agricultural use. Um, the other thing is uh, the recast of the drinking water directive, which has also just found political agreement and which will come into being in, in the coming period. Uh, here on the right side, you see all the other water instruments that are also very relevant uh, to industry. Um, I would just pause for a little moment on the industrial emissions directive, which as I think many or if not all of you know, regulates um, by industrial sector uh, emissions to air, water, and soil. Um, from the water perspective, uh, the industries that have spoken now, of course, I'm sure have also come into contact with this uh, directive on a large scale. This directive is currently also under evaluation. And uh, just a side note, the colleagues, uh, because this uh, directive is in a different unit, not my unit, have also asked me uh, to see with you, but I'm not sure there will be time, whether you have any concrete suggestions for them in follow-up to the evaluation of how the Industrial Emissions Directive could be made uh, more useful or even more useful to the circular economy in terms of uh, water consumptions. Now, uh, on the situation of EU waters, uh, just to say that we have done a very thorough process over the past two years, and at the end of last year, we have been able to see a complete picture of both the state of our waters on the ground in Europe and the state of our legislation and whether or not it is actually suitable or still suitable to address the challenges that we have uh, on our waters. 
Um, you, I think, probably have all heard that Europe's water are not in great shape at the moment uh, for surface water bodies. We're only at 40% uh, who are in the desired status after many, many years of the directives being in force. The fitness check that I mentioned has covered uh, four directives uh, more precisely, and uh, this one here, the Environmental Quality Standards Directive, or Priority Substances Directive, as you may have known it, is I think uh, very relevant to the chemicals industry and in your uh, presentation you also alluded to uh, the requirements of this directive. In parallel, the Urban Wastewater Treatment Directive has also been evaluated and uh, the two processes are of course uh, very interlinked because uh, the impact on water quality that the Urban Wastewater Treatment Directive is managing to have is directly relevant for good status under the Water Framework Directive. Very uh, briefly on the results of the fitness check, um, Basically, in overall, uh, we have found that the directives are fit for purpose. Of course, there's room for improvement, but what we have is, is very good already as it is. And uh, in terms of uh, the further improvements, these are now being looked at what should and could be possible to do. Uh, we found that the main reasons why um, the objectives of the directives have not been met so far is uh, a really big lag, uh, lagging behind in the implementation uh, in the member states. Um, this is also due to insufficient funding that has been allocated to measures to address water issues. And finally, uh, better integration with other uh, policies, and in particular agriculture, energy, and transport, all of which are also very relevant for your industries. Uh, they have been mentioned in your presentations. Um, is a really very necessary, and we need to reflect jointly on how to address this. Uh, very briefly here, the lessons learned in more detail. These are the topics that we are now looking at in more um, in more detail, as I mentioned, to see how uh, we design the follow-up to the fitness check. Uh, very important also to note in the area of chemicals, there is definitely room for improvement in how uh, chemicals are being dealt with. Uh, more synergy with other chemicals legislation also is, is needed. And uh, you know uh, that under the Green Deal now, uh, the Commission is working on a new chemical strategy. This, of course, is also very important for water. Um, I wanted to show you also very briefly uh, some results of the Urban Wastewater Treatment Directive's evaluation. Basically, this directive has delivered over the years. It's an old directive, and we have seen a lot of improvement in uh, the water quality thanks to this directive. In terms of uh, lessons to learn and room for improvement, uh, apart from the finding that, of course, implementation has to improve, which is the same for all the water directives. For this particular uh, directive, uh, there are new contaminants that should be addressed. There's scope uh, to better address energy use and sludge management. And there's also some improvements that can be made in the area of government. Um, I wanted to mention very briefly also that under the Green Deal, um, there will be uh, many areas where follow-up to our evaluations uh, will go forward. The first has already happened. Uh, you've probably all seen by now the new Circular Economy Action Plan. And in that, there is a clear reference uh, to the fact that uh, for the circular economy, it is necessary to improve water management and water consumption. The Commission has committed itself in this document to look into uh, further areas for water reuse to see whether at EU level it is useful and helpful uh, including for industry to look into possibilities to work together on water reuse uh, practices or, or even uh, guidance or, or other means. Um, there will also be a dedicated space uh, to the zero pollution ambition. There will be an action plan which is foreseen for the end of 2021. 
and uh, in this action plan, uh, concrete actions will be announced to address uh, pollution in terms of water, air, and soil. And of course, many of the issues that we found in our water fitness check will find uh, a follow-up action in there. I think I will stop here to leave Thank some you, time Bettina. for discussion.